second. Yeah, thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, thank you also very much to Petra for putting this uh, together, to Mama for, for hosting me. Uh, and I, I'm sorry, this has been a misunderstanding that's been going around a bit as I've traveled. Uh, I know some people are here expecting something a little different. Uh, than what they're going to get. Um, I'm afraid uh, some of you wanted to see that Twitter got uh, tonight. That Twitter got, unfortunately, is in fact still in Moscow uh, at this point. He is not available. Uh, I'm hoping he might be at some point. Um, and uh, I do appreciate you, Hugh, Hugh, coming out and, and, and being here tonight. And I appreciate all the work that's been done on publicity. Uh, many of the places I have gone for the last year, uh, people have been very supportive. And I appreciate that. Uh, every now and then, there have been uh, small protests uh, that have marked, that have marked my, my visit. <laughs> You know, uh, so some places are like that. Uh, but, um, but it's been nice to travel here. Uh, I am uh, right now just back from, uh, you can, as you can probably guess, uh, Slovenia. Um, <laughs> and, and it was a nice, a nice trip, I have to admit. I, I was coming first, I first arrived in Zagreb and then traveled there. And uh, I had a very good time. Uh, I have to say it was a little bit difficult getting there. There was a little misunderstanding. I got on the uh, wrong, <laughs> I got on the wrong train. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I just uh, didn't make it there. And then I was told, no, 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 uh, you really have to go by boat. And uh, I tried that as well. It took a little while uh, to make it there, but I, I did eventually. And I had time along the way to uh, learn a thing or two about Slovenia, where I'd never been before. Uh, and uh, uh, I think I found probably the best possible source for that, uh, the best I could. Um, unfortunately, the Slovenians themselves uh, did not learn so much about me, as it turns out. Uh, but uh, some of them, some of them did come. <laughs> some of them did come anyway. Uh, and if you notice, uh, in Slovenia, I am a filozof Twitteria, uh, which um, should tell you something about the state of philosophy in Slovenia, uh, that I should be considered a, a filozof. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I like that, because I saw it and I thought, OK, I, I'm big in Slovenia. Uh, but as you know, uh, that's not so hard to do. Uh, <laughs> that's the joke you're supposed to make, right? <laughs> OK, <laughs> right? But I, that being said, I was asked very shortly after arriving in Zagreb, uh, so, oh, where are you from? I said, I'm from New York. Said, ah, Zagreb, is it a big, big city or a little city? Because that was the question. And I said, well, uh, bigger than Ljubljana, because I asked her. <laughs> so. But it was fun to be in Slovenia. It was a little traumatic for me, because I actually uh, grew up in the Cold War era. Uh, 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 so I'm, I'm somewhat older than many of you. Um, I don't know where you were in 1991. Um, <laughs> but uh, I myself was, I don't know why that's funny, um, but, I, but I was sent to uh, American uh, Re-education camp uh, looked a little bit like this. Uh, what it was is uh, a Slovenian Catholic school, actually, in the United States. I attended St. Cyril and Methodius uh, Catholic School. And so uh, I took that out on my audience uh, the best I could in, in Slovenia. But I did not make them listen to the song that I had to hear at the end of every mass uh, for about five years. Uh, which was sung in Slovenian by many Americans who had no connection to Slovenia anymore and knew nothing of the language. And I don't know how you mumble and sing at the same time, but that is what was done every Sunday with this song. Uh, but it was kind of nice to revisit that and to look back to try to find this song. I did some research, Petra found this. Uh, and in doing so, I found that some good things have happened back uh, at my old uh, school and, 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 and church uh, in this town where I used to live. Um, they're actually turning it into quite an interesting work of art, I found. Uh, so I was happy to see that, that some things have developed. But it was nice for me because I had the chance to thank Slovenia and their, their Catholic tradition uh, for many of the values uh, that, that they taught me uh, in that experience. And Really, uh, especially over the holidays, I, uh, I have to think about all that I learned uh, from that time. 
And, and certainly that, that time has also left its mark uh, on the work I do now on, on Twitter. Uh, I think that tradition also lives on to some extent. I mean, that might be a typical example. Uh, here, perhaps, another uh, typical example. Um, uh, oh, sorry, uh, that one's not one of mine. I uh, <laughs> confused that. Uh, possibly the best, the best tweet ever written uh, for my money. Um, but it's interesting. I, I, I realized, though, when I was there, a lot has changed, but that uh, uh, the church remains very important uh, uh, still. Um, Leibach, of course, I know something about. Uh, I know uh, Tripp was rather controversial in North Korea, their use of fascist imagery, uh, uh, also rather unsettling. Um, and I saw for myself uh, right now on the border, they're setting up for a new concert. Uh, so I saw uh, some, of, some of that, not a, not a pretty picture. Of course, I learned a little bit about it as, as, I, as I read a bit of the news. Uh, I, and I hate to inform you of this, but uh, I was told when I was there, uh, uh, confidentially, that the technical obstacles are in fact a fence. Uh, so just so you know, uh, uh, but I also want you to know that uh, it's coming at some uh, expense. Uh, also uh, uh, to those uh, constructing this, this, this fence, I didn't know if you know that 12 euros is the going price uh, for a meter of fence. Um, but I reminded them, I was told, uh, to, to remind them that they should have got um, a couple of meters less, uh, probably, of, uh, of fence, that they went over uh, a little bit. And so I tried to, to advise them to the contrary. But I got a lot of good advice <laughs> about, about visiting Slovenia. Uh, and yes, I did remember uh, to say hello to Giannis. So uh, I, I recall that. But it was nice to get to uh, 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 Croatia finally uh, to arrive in Zagreb. Uh, congratulations on the European Union. Uh, 2013, I believe, was the entry to that. Um, I know uh, my friends in Greece, I uh, think that's working out uh, pretty well <laughs> for them. Uh, <laughs> but it's nice to be here because I also did find, I know that there are some uh, uh, animosities and, and cliches and, and stereotypes uh, that exists between Slovenia and, and, and Croatia. But I did find some people had some nice things to say about Zagreb and gave me some, some decent tips about getting to know the place. So um, I was told not to miss uh, the impressive uh, architecture. Uh, I was also told that you have an outstanding uh, 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 art museum here in the front. Um, uh, that there's a very interesting uh, fashion scene here. Um, and also you have a terrific amusement park. Uh, <laughs> I know what that is. I went to that uh, just now. I was there an hour ago. Um, actually, it's very touching. It was a moving place. It was. Uh, has everyone been to that? Because I am told only tourists go to the museum. The rest of you are already living in the present of broken relationships. You don't need a museum of broken relationships. Well, if you've never been there, then let me give you the uh, 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 my. Uh, the lesson that I took away from the Museum of Broken Relationships is uh, one of the main things that seems to break relationships. And if any of you uh, uh, are, in fact, in social media or use technology, uh, technology seems to be a big object in, in ruining relationships. There are many stories and objects surrounding technology. Routers, uh, uh, the toaster. Uh, this is called the toaster of vindication, uh, which I very much enjoyed. Uh, this is an MP4 uh, 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 music uh, player, um, which I didn't quite understand what, what this was doing in the museum. And then I saw the tag uh, and it made perfect sense. It reminds me of my mother. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand it either, uh, but probably the most dangerous technology of them all, I realize, is in fact the uh, toilet paper dispenser, uh, which I thought was interesting. This was the only object in the museum where, uh, that had this warning sign underneath it about do not touch the object. So evidently, it's rather hard to resist that one. <laughs> I did learn a few things <laughs> after touching the toilet paper uh, uh, dispenser. I also learned, though, a few things about my own country, my own relationships the places where I live, um, and I guess the thing I'll never forget is that um, uh, Chicago is sad, uh, San, Francis <laughs> San Francisco is sad, 
and Brooklyn uh, is extremely, extremely sad. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's 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 pretty ingenious. That's uh, I, uh, sad is 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 outstanding. I. I like that. It just needs a period, and that's a T-shirt. I mean, that's, that's, that's perfect. Brooklyn, comma, sad. Chicago, sad. I like that. Anyway, we should go home now, because that's the best joke I've got. Um, but uh, even if you don't like what you see that the Museum of Broken Relationships, they have a little bit of an uh, uh, instructional guide how to take part. Uh, but it seems to me as if you're involved with that to some extent in relationships, but um, also perhaps a bit in, in politics. Uh, I've uh, been reading a little bit about uh, various relationships that have recently come about and recently fizzled. Uh, secret negotiations, never very good for relationships, I understand, uh, but I'm glad to see that the political analysts here are working on, <laughs> are working on this. So I've, I've learned a lot from Croatian television about the current situation. Uh, all right, I know nothing about any of these things. Uh, what am I here to talk about? Uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about, uh, I suppose, what it is that I do briefly, and then uh, we're going to leave some time so we can uh, uh, talk about anything that you happen to be interested in uh, about it, if anything. Um, but uh, I, my own background comes from primarily the field of, of German literature, uh, modern literature, uh, philosophy, critical thought. Uh, you need no reminder, philosophy uh, being the love of, of wisdom. I'm more really from uh, theory than philosophy. And those of you who have studied theory know that theory, of course, comes from the Greek for uh, the love of theory. Uh, and I am more specifically from critical theory, which you might also know uh, the love of using highly enigmatic Walter Benjamin quotations to make a highly obvious point. So that's my background. So if you're asking yourself, uh, how do I build a social media empire, uh, this, is, this is how you begin. Uh, and then you incorporate various interests. One of my main interests has been German culture. It's a lot of my own background. Uh, something that I've liked about what I've done online has been kind of serving a little bit as a, a cultural intermediary in a very small way. Uh, it's had some, um, I think, uh, uh, accomplishments, but um, also uh, not only, also some, some, some defeats. I recently saw uh, the breakfast table is reading the paper and I saw this headline. Uh, do some of you speak German? Viele Deutsche denken schlecht über Amerika. Yeah, so many Germans think poorly of America. Um, I'm sure you don't see such headlines here. Um, but what I found, it was disconcerting. I thought, okay, I thought maybe, maybe relations could be improving. Um, but I realized the best way to change a perception like that is actually with uh, your teaspoon. Uh, and, and, and the world looks a little different uh, at that point. Um, I can't blame Germans for thinking poorly of, of America. Uh, they, they don't always have it so easy in the US. This in uh, Chicago, which uh, as you know is a, is a sad, sad town. Uh, <laughs> from my, I'm from Wisconsin, which uh, is the home not only of some Slovenian immigrants, uh, um, but also um, any number of, of German immigrants in the 19th century, primarily uh, failed revolutionaries from 1848 who ended up there and in the little town uh, where I'm from. And so there was a real German presence. Um, this is a uh, house I grew up in. Um, uh, I've tried to take some of that with me now to uh, New York where I live now and tried in my own in my own little way to say something nice and encouraging about why you might want to learn German and why you might want to have something to do with its, something to do with its, with its culture. Uh, I, this is from a little PR campaign I, I worked on with, with the German Cultural Institute. But uh, as any artist knows, uh, marketing has its limits and this was considered a little off in terms of the, the message. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I tried again for the Swiss. I did the best that I could for them. Uh, I also was supposed to say something nice about uh, Austrian German. I tried that as well. 
Do people know this movie, by the way? Because all Austrians claim never to have heard of this movie. They say, ah, a sound, of, sound of Music. I do not know this film. I, I do not know this film. Uh, but in any case, you do what you can. But again, here I had a, a different idea. It was considered a little too risque. Uh, but you know, uh, when, <laughs> the, one that, the one thing that actually did seem to last um, uh, uh, was this, the worst poem that I've ever written, which is saying, <laughs> which is saying a lot. Uh, of course, I had a better idea. Um, <laughs> I, I think that one's not bad. Uh, anyhow, so, so in, if you're considering then, as I said, uh, social media empire, uh, as I said, think about your background, think about your interests, um, uh, think about uh, what it is you want to communicate, and I would encourage you also to think about going on the road, as I have, even in a low-budget way. Uh, if you're fortunate, uh, you might have a chance at a, a publisher, a German publisher was interested in, in my work uh, until they saw the sales figures. Uh, <laughs> however, I was told I am allowed to keep uh, 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 the, the vehicle they gave me for the tour. So <laughs> that's, that's been handy. But I have a lot of people to thank for making it, making it possible. Uh, my parents, uh, God, uh, my therapist, uh, of course, also my uh, fans on Twitter who have been very supportive over the years. Um, and, but you know, these people have made also a certain type of community come about that would not have existed otherwise. And I know that you have come. Uh, I saw uh, a, a, a beautiful thing, the, the, the sign over the entranceway of uh, introduction to utopian negation. I've never seen such a thing. I, I very much enjoy that. This is how I spell it out, I guess, in the, in the book. It's sort of just a, a silly little thing, kind of a joke, not, not, not entirely a joke, um, but a little bit abstract, uh, probably uh, a little bit more um, Probably a little bit more concrete uh, in a visual example, but the um, but what <laughs> that yeah that keeps going for a while uh, keeps going but that's that's what I like about that um, I, <laughs> anyway so translating this into a book has meant in Germany making uh, tweets look like poetry uh, although not necessarily. Uh, sounding like, like poetry, especially not in, in German. Uh, the uh, uh, American version looks a little bit more like a comic book, I suppose, uh, but it's, 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 it's closer in some ways to the spirit of, 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 of what I'm trying to do. Um, but it's not just about one book, it's about many books. Um, it's about becoming part of a little culture industry in a way, which has not been the easiest thing, and I have mixed Mixed feelings about um, the original project. Uh, of course, had this name of No Nine, uh, which came out of a fair amount of anger and frustration uh, with myself to a great extent, but also to uh, with the work that I was trying to do and was not succeeding at doing as a university professor. And much of my problem was with the language of, of academia. I could not find a language that I felt like was was saying something that that, that mattered in any way. Um, and so I was happy uh, when I started to work with these, these publishers and they had some decent suggestions uh, for what I, what I could do with this project and translating it into, into a book, uh, into a commodity. Uh, one was to perhaps uh, appeal to a slightly wider audience. Um, uh, <laughs> Perhaps there's there's more money uh, there's more money in in, in self help uh, and of course the real money I was told is in the uh, American uh, uh, market and that uh, one should not one should not forget that um, <laughs> but the whole time I've been tried to in some way be somewhat loyal to the man on whom that avatar is based and I would say most people who uh, have followed what I do on Twitter actually don't know uh, who that avatar represents and that's uh, the uh, philosopher uh, Theodore Adorno, or Theodor W. Adorno, Wiesengrund, uh, being his uh, 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 name before adopting the Adorno. And even if you've not read his work in the past, you're probably actually familiar with some of the 
terms he established in studying uh, uh, culture, uh, the, the best known one being the culture industry, uh, but also uh, essentially asking this question of what happens to cultural production, music, art, uh, literature under conditions of mass production. So there's a capitalism critique that's obviously part of this and, and, and combining the uh, analysis of Marx, of Freud, uh, a new rereading of Hegel into uh, uh, a larger comprehensive critique of, of contemporary society. Uh, that's all rather boring. Uh, it's probably best explained, I would say, in one brief exchange that's become pretty well known from the 60s, an interview with uh, Der Spiegel, in which uh, Dono is asked, Herr Professor, von zwei Wochen erschien die Welt noch in Ordnung. Uh, so roughly translated is what sort of, uh, uh, not just professor, but of course, Mr. <laughs> professor. Uh, uh, up until two weeks ago, it seemed as if everything was as it should be. The world was in order somehow. And his answer, uh, mir nicht, uh, not to me. And in a way that speaks a lot to the type of, of, of analysis that the Frankfurt School was interested in. And one that's meant a lot to me and that I've tried to remain faithful to uh, uh, on, on, on the internet. And for that reason, uh, uh, yeah, for those, uh, I actually didn't know what that meant for a long time, but uh, you only live once is, uh, of course, that abbreviation to which I like to add, uh, I hope. Um, <laughs> So I was happy that the marketing department was respectful of my project uh, in thinking about merchandising. Uh, their ideas, I think, were a little bit restrained, which was, which was good, although if you notice closely, you'll see a tear uh, 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 falling there on the right-hand side. Uh, and they didn't do anything that was too tasteless, and I think that, in general, they avoided kitsch as much as possible. <laughs> And they also didn't just simply sell the brand to the highest bidder, which was nice. They showed a fair amount of respect for the German cultural tradition uh, as a whole. Um, if you've followed anything I do online, you know that this figure, uh, Kaspar Daffy Friedrich der Wanderer, the Wanderer shows up in various guises uh, over, the, over the years uh, in any never different occasions. <laughs> It's led to various abominations. Uh, I've received photos like this from the gallery in Hamburg on a few occasions. Uh, that has continued with the book. Uh, you feel a little guilty about this after a while. Uh, but then you take a look and you see that someone on the internet will always go at least one step farther. Uh, <laughs> at least one step farther than, 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 than you have gone. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, poor uh, Theodore Adorno, uh, there's, you don't have to wonder much about what he would think of this. Um, and I do, I do feel bad about it. Uh, fortunately, I have received at least some degree of support uh, from a small group of philosophers in uh, Slovenia. Um, <laughs> So what is it that I actually end up doing? I've been working on a definition over time because, again, now I'm explaining utopian negation and what that looks like in terms of, of uh, utopian negation in many ways is your content for the media empire you, you'll build if it is uh, uh, your ambition. Um, and you have to think about a genre, of course, that you're going to write in. Uh, I generally work within uh, comedy, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know it at times, but within comedy, a classic definition, tragedy plus time, not my own definition. Uh, Twitter comedy is a little different, uh, tragedy plus time, minus time, uh, if you're taking notes. Uh, and the subgenre I work in is called German Twitter comedy. Uh, it's tragedy plus time, minus time, minus comedy, <laughs> uh, plus fart jokes, <laughs> plus Hegel, uh, and uh, predictably, minus Hegel. Uh, <laughs> Would you like to see any examples of what that looks like in practice, or have you had enough at this point? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Well, uh, I try not to forget about what it is that uh, I'm originally coming from, and that would be my advice to you as well if you are uh, young creatives uh, thinking about uh, 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 what it is you might end up doing. Don't forget your original passions. Uh, for me, the beauty of the German language, uh, I have not forgotten about. I have not forgotten about its uh, flexibility and how much I enjoy speaking it. <laughs> I try to correct misperceptions about that language, uh, about it somehow <laughs> having long words, or it being somehow difficult, uh, or 
Some people seem to think it's difficult to learn, uh, but once you do start learning it, there are helpful hints. Um, <laughs> don't, don't stop. Mm. You should push yourself, though. I mean, it's easy to make jokes about a language. Uh, you need to think a little bit more um, and involve a little bit more of yourself. Think about the big ideas, the difficult ideas. Think about, for instance, um, those, those philosophers, those thinkers, whoever they happen to be, who inspired you the most, whose work you found the most challenging. And um, think about how you can communicate what it is that they taught you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that one's dumb. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, but this one's worse. Um, the, this one's a dumb one about Wittgenstein. And uh, if you're going to write it, if you're going to write a dumb joke about a French philosopher, it better be Roland Barthes uh, or, or American philosopher uh, Susan Sontag. Um, Oh, uh, sorry, this is the, ooh, this is a mistake. This was for yesterday. Um, let's, uh, are you interested in Zizek jokes? Do you know Zizek? Zizek is, uh, um, uh, what does he do? He's a, uh, a, a part-time philosopher, part-time film, film star, part-time, uh, 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 I'm not sure exactly what, but you'll know him from his beard and uh, novelty t-shirts and uh, love of Lacan. Um, and so I've tried, if you, if you are interested, a little sampling of, of uh, my attempt to uh, tell Zizek jokes. In front of Slavoj Zizek, he was wise enough to be in London to not subject himself uh, to uh, uh, my, my <laughs> so I'm worried about Zizek, but I was, but, but I was disappointed. I mean, uh, I didn't know how he'd take it, but I was disappointed that he, uh, I could not inform him of the important role that he now plays, actually, in uh, German culture. Um, there's, uh, 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 <laughs> I, I, I thought he would, I thought he would enjoy that, but uh, he, he wasn't, he wasn't there for it. Uh, but I don't know. I could go through these uh, all, all, all day. Uh, they're really not terribly interesting. Uh, but, you know, one does what one, what one can. Uh, but I have to say, in general, um, Zizek is a philosopher who appreciates jokes. And uh, that's something very much that I admire about, about his work. Uh, have tried to, <laughs> have, have tried to think about uh, the best, the best I can in, in, in various ways. Uh, uh, try not to uh, forget. <laughs> try not to forget some of Zizek's main influences: uh, Hegel and Stalin. Uh, I don't know. The other things are just kind of silly. Uh, but uh, you know, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not really nice to make. It's not fair to make fun of a philosopher's attire uh, or to say. But it's important to me to be clear that I'm, I'm not trying to anyway compete uh, with, with Zizek, uh, whether it be about my performance. And certainly, uh, I'm not trying to uh, outcompete uh, Zizek in, in, in book sales. Uh, although you'll notice that uh, there are, in fact, only one, one copy remaining here. But it's not all fun and games. If you're interested in utopian negation, you have to do your homework. You have to know uh, a few basic philosophical concepts. Um, that uh, you should uh, uh, try to try to uh, remember uh, as 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 best you can, um, but also re recall not everyone who's interested in a utopian project or the negation of a utopian project is going to be interested in things quite that intellectual. Uh, you should also comment on everyday life and culture, um, <laughs> and you should try to make it. You should try to make it clear why someone might be interested in a social media platform uh, like Twitter. Uh, some are not convinced uh, that it's uh, of any value for them, uh, or they don't think that it can offer anything in terms of creativity. Uh, they might not understand the, the, the shared human experience. And uh, ultimately, they might not understand the historical uh, significance uh, of Twitter in its context. <laughs> So, 
Okay, uh, you're laughing. So with that, uh, we will we will take a break right now, uh, move into uh, uh, a brief conversation, uh, and then open things up to questions. And if uh, you'd like to know more, we can talk a bit more about some other things. Uh, but for right now, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.